and do one. And let's see. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Studio buddies doing a podcast with a <laughs> Yeah, I just saw your face then I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> I Good pressed the wrong chat. one. Well done. Okay, go. <laughs> Welcome to Studio Buddies. My name is Simon. And I'm Jamie. <laughs> and this week we're going to be discussing um, our influences and what keeps us motivated in yeah. art making. It's going to, so going to be art making kind of, more than anything, isn't it? It's kind of going to be like our top tips for, you know, when... You're in a bit of a slump and you can't generate new ideas, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So kind of the things that we do to to get out of that and start doing work because everyone has those days where they try and they try and do something and your brain's just a tumbleweed with nothing going on. Absolutely. Yeah, that is horrible and everyone yeah. experiences. It. I say everyone. Some people say they don't. I still don't believe them. I think that. Some people who do experience that just make an excuse of doing something else yeah. to generate ideas. And that's kind of what we're talking about is like idea generation and just positive. Um, it's not like staying positive like last week's episode. It's more, um, it's kind of positive injection of influence and inspiration to kind of get you uh, making art and thinking creatively as opposed to having this, I don't know, just empty space, this void of... Yeah concept so yeah do you want to start um yeah okay so um are we doing this as like a similar thing as last week where we like i'll say one you say another and we kind of just like flip between the two it's up to you do you like that way or do you want us to do it more chaos i think i think that's i don't know i kind of like that setup um if you can hear bells ringing by the way and a lot of clattering in the background my cats have decided that today is going to be a day where um they try to ruin all of my plans um my mirror has already been knocked over uh that's just a small tangent by the way so if there's a lot of background noise i'm very sorry i can't I can't control them. Today they woke up and chose chaos. Um, <laughs> and I'm not happy about it. So That is the nature of cats. That's why we love yeah. them. Part of the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I started doing, um, it was more so the beginning of this year. Um, I think I've mentioned it in a previous episode. Um, but I do think that it is very relevant for this. So I'm going to say it again because I value this advice nugget from my tutor. I think it was brilliant. Um, essentially, if you're kind of, I don't know, it could be anything, even if you're in education, anything. Um, if you have any previous work, um, a lot of the time, like when we have previous work, we're kind of like, okay, well that's over now. Don't have to think about it. But you can find some really good things in work that you've done before. So if you get a viewfinder, so two, right angles of paper and just, you know, put them together and make a square or a rectangle or whatever tickles your fancy, I suppose. That's not a square. That's a rectangle. <laughs> um, my my fingers, but, you know. Um, <laughs> so those two right angles and um, it doesn't matter how big your piece is at all, but it's more about finding interesting compositions within previous pieces. So just placing that viewfinder over something you've done before seeing like what happens when you isolate certain aspects of it and that could be a good way of maybe not so much generating new ideas but generating new ways of developing work further um so what i did with mine was i took the the viewfinder i took pictures cropped them so um that was the only thing that was in there and then i did um like thumbnails in different materials that I wasn't necessarily comfortable in. So I think I did, um, 
I'll start off with the ones I was comfortable in because I think that's a good place to start. So I did um, pencil, uh, fine liner, biro, um, and then outside of that I did colour pastels, um, chalk and charcoal, and gouache, um, and coloured pencils I think. So it was just really interesting for me to see um, the the different kinds of compositions that I could do from that and the different materials that I could use as opposed to the acrylic paint that was in the previous piece. Um, it does make it a little bit difficult because, well at least for me, because I was basing it off a painting and to draw or paint a painting isn't the easiest thing to do but it was fun and I enjoyed it and it was like a I want to say it was quick it wasn't um it was quite <laughs> it was quite tedious but as opposed to some of the other stuff I've done it was a quick way of looking at my work in a in a different way if that makes any mm. sense yeah it's a good way to break it down isn't it and sort of see the different elements of it tonally yeah. compositionally just to try and like isolate what marks you like in certain areas because yeah. certain parts of a painting are different from others so it's interesting to see what you choose because you don't yeah. know what's going to stand out to you when you use the viewfinder so it's it's a great tool it's a really good tip i don't it do it also often like enough. it also depends on what day you like you painted that painting on because if it's over a period of days your your brush marks are going to be different from the day before um, and I've only noticed that very recently in the more, um, I want to say, abstract stuff that I'm doing. I'm not an abstract painter, but apparently I am now. Um, but I noticed <laughs> that when I went back to it the next day, the kind of marks I was making was different because I wasn't holding my brush the same. I was stood in a different place. Um, my mood was different. So I think that's also really interesting as well. And especially mm. for people that do paint because... Unless you're doing paintings like this, it's probably going to be a, a multiple day thing anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was a good thing for me to do, especially when it came to going into my third year, because the idea of it is to kind of motivate yourself and push your previous work further as mm. like, because that's the mindset that artists have anyway. It's kind of, you know, self-motivation um generating ideas for yourself um and it's a good way to just carry on until you yeah. die or until you <laughs> get bored you know <laughs> yeah absolutely well i mean i want to because of you mentioning the abstract part i want to just let uh the viewers know kind of where we are in the timeline of our education so yeah. we're coming towards the end of our third year really yeah um it's uh, barreling you know down that that tunnel really to get to the end and both of us have been squeezed into this abstract space and i was kind of squeezed out of it really because of my yeah. inability to um manage large paintings in the space because i've stayed in lockdown so i'm really constrained with what space i can use and how i can yeah. manage painting when i've got a computer here a computer there bed there it's just not it's not practical to have big you know things like this is not especially big and even that's quite big for the space that's available so yeah i instead got squeezed into doing um video uh making instead so i'm doing art films now instead of painting which i'm a bit disappointed with because i really wanted to explore painting but the university they require you to attend and to deliver the paintings on campus, which I'm not going to do. So that's why if I use video, I can just send it and it doesn't require yeah. attendance really. And that's why I've gone that way. Whereas with Jamie, she's um, she's doing studies that are uh, figurative and she's been encouraged to now focus on certain aspects of those which push her into an abstract space. Is that accurate to say? Yeah. Um... <laughs> It started off with the still life that I did in oil um, called Childhood Memories image over here somewhere. Um, so it started off with that and I had, um, that painting's very large, it's uh, six foot by four foot. Um, my tutor was pushing me 
um, to do more large scale stuff and I I very much appreciate it because I, I do enjoy working so big now, it's really bizarre. Mm. Um, yeah. I was very much afraid of a big canvas before then. Um, but that painting took months, like months, because I'd never used oil before. It was kind of like throwing a child into the deep end with a pool noodle and being like, you'll you'll be all right. Um, you've never had swimming lessons, but you'll be fine. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah, like if you kick your legs, maybe you'll be okay. Um, yeah. So it was very, um, it was very anxiety inducing for me because I, I've heard wonderful things about oil paint and I very much appreciate how it looks. It's, I, I really enjoy it. And for me, because it was a new material, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, you managed to help me, you know, teaching me about like different ways to thin paint and stuff and I very much appreciate that. Like the kind of brushes that I need to get because obviously it's so thick. Um, so it went from me doing that still life and one of the other paintings I wanted to do was just the static TV. Um, and that was my choice, but I was like, I think it would be really cool to just have a massive canvas that is a static TV because it would be so big and, you know, kind of in your face. And when I had first started to do it, I, um, my idea was to apply colour underneath um, so that when I put the whitewash on top, you'd still have colour coming through. Um, because one of my tutors, while I was doing... Um, childhood memories were saying that I should have I should use colours in the objects to put in the static like you wouldn't necessarily notice that the colour was there unless you really looked at it but it kind of it kind of created like this reflection between the two and it worked it tied the two together in a really subtle but you know really positive way so I had then started to put the whitewash on it and I had really thinned this oil paint with like oil because I'd put terps, um, I'd used terps on the colour behind and I was like I want to know what how it would work with oil if I put the oil on top and when I was um, when I was putting it on with like this massive paintbrush it's like this if you ever go to the range by the way you can get a paintbrush this big I don't know how I missed it and I kicked myself when I found it because it is the best paintbrush I've ever bought. It's huge and it saved me so much time and I should have had it ages ago. Um, so top tip, keep your eye out because you will find these things and you'll kick yourself if you find it when it's too late. Is it in the late. art section or is it in the painters and decorators section? It's in the painters and decorators section, That's which is I the section I... I don't go into, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So I had really thinned this white and as I was putting it on, um, the marks that I was making, like it wasn't a complete whitewash. You could see like where the brush had hit it and the way it had been dragged and come off again. Because as I was doing it, I realized I didn't want to cover the whole thing in white because I'd lose a lot of the color. And when I had my dialogue um, for the degree show, so it's kind of where we all well, the majority of us go into a room, uh, we set it up kind of similar to how we want it and we talk about the things that we want to do for our exhibition. Um, I had the audio um, that my grandma had made playing on a speaker um, with childhood memories and this other painting. And we all sat there for like five minutes listening to my grandma do this guided meditation. Everyone was staring at this um, this other painting, bearing in mind, right, I haven't really listened to that audio um, because it's very, it's very upsetting for me. Um, Do you mind if I play an excerpt on here because I have that downloaded, it's a lovely yeah. recording. Yeah, um, so insert. Um, this, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but that was a picture of my grandma in the background. Um, I want to paint that, it, the colours are so nice with the yeah. dark top, the red, the white. Yeah. The, yeah. Good. So I was sat there crying um, and everyone else was kind of staring at this piece and it got five minutes in. This is a 35 minute audio clip, right? And I was like, I, if I don't pause it now, we're all just going to be sat here for 35 minutes while I'm sobbing. Um, so I paused it and I was like, are we, go are we good? Um, 
because this is a very long clip and my tutor was saying that this abstract piece works a lot better with the audio because childhood memories has its own narrative that's been painted in because it's kind of you know it's a scene um it it has the narrative there whereas the more abstract piece you can use these additional items to build the narrative for it so it works better and that's how I was kind of pushed into doing the more abstract stuff and at first I didn't agree and I was like eh no but I, I see it now however part of me regrets it because I struggle with this abstract stuff I don't know what I'm doing um <laughs> so it's kind of like I don't know getting lost in a major city and just being like well this is where I am now you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's tricky I mean I've started to put aside uh not put aside uh save on Instagram certain abstract pieces because I really appreciate the composition whether the color composition or the balance of the image or whatever it is and yeah. my kind of um not detachment, what's the word? It's just kind of my misunderstanding, my kind of misalignment with it mentally, where I'm intrigued, I appreciate it. It's really, yeah. it is inspirational to me, even though I don't usually go to abstract to get inspired for making work. Sometimes when I yeah. see it work, that just makes me want to paint, even if I'm not going to paint anything like that. It's the same with drawing. Sometimes I, you know, I look at certain drawings and it just makes me want to draw and I won't draw anything like what I'm looking at. Yeah. But I'll, still use that as inspirational motivation for me um yeah so yeah the abstract stuff i sort of resent still the university's um kind of way of maneuvering you into that space yeah when you really want to you know still explore figurative studies and and try to create finished pieces using more representational um, subjects and they just yeah. They just don't respond to that really very well. It's the fact that I can see it though. That's the problem. Like I can see exactly what he's saying, and I I'm kicking myself for it because I'm like, no, I get what you mean. Like I yeah. I fully understand what you're saying to me, and that's the annoying part because I wish <laughs> that part of me was like, no, you're wrong. I'm gonna continue doing still life <laughs> um, because I really enjoy it. But yeah. it's, it's just not going that way, and it's oh, it's so droning because I I'm just I'm like a small child in a supermarket. I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> or where I'm going. It's like I'm just here. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> right. Let's stop it there. Yeah. Okay. I need to um, move. So going from abstract uh, ideas. I would say because I'm not an abstract artist either, yeah. I take influence from things like um, there's a podcast that used to be on and I got Jamie to watch it and I love it. R.I.P. Yeah, it's ended. Yeah. Uh, the Draftsman podcast with Stan Prokopenko and Marshall Vandruff and they had loads yeah. of guest speakers and loads of different episodes about loads of different things and that's you know, was inspiration and motivation for me to do my own podcast. That's, you know, what used to get me all yeah. inspired to have nice conversations because podcasts have different feels to them. And I love the dynamic between Marshall and Stan. I just thought it was such a funny, yeah. sweet kind of, you know, relationship they had. And Stan has the, I don't know if you've seen this, the Proco Skull. Oh, yeah, you have, of course. Yeah, because we both yeah, have the right I, one. Yeah, I wanted one and like I love it. Uh but I'm a uni student and I'm poor. Yeah. And like part of me just wants a Proco skull, but like <laughs> I understand why it has to be expensive, but I'm just like, please, <laughs> it's well, so expensive. I'll show you why it has to be expensive because my mum got me a cheap one because she knew that I wanted a skull as a thing yeah. to study. And she got me a skull and it's it's really good, but it's <clears throat> this is the skull. Yeah. It's really cool. But it has got it has got a few problems like that nose there is chipped and the jaw no longer opens because it came damaged so I had to glue it closed. And this is because it's a cheap knockoff. But it is it's enough to do studies of, but it's not 
the same as the Proco skull. It's like the teeth come out at a weird angle. It's like a little bit off. It's not it's not right. You can tell by the profile that it's not correct. But <laughs> this is a good time to have a super close up of uh, what's what's this cat's name? Sooty. Sooty, of course, yeah. Sooty. Just to show you as well, that's the skull that I'm showing. Oh, I, yeah, I see what you mean. Which is cool, but it's got damage. And from the side profile, yeah. you can see that the teeth come out too far. And it's just, yeah. it's got enough wrong where I'm like, oh, it's cool, it's great thought. But that's why the Proco skull is um, so pricey, is because it will be anatomically correct and consistent. And it won't have these... And very high quality as well. Yeah, it won't have these kind of yeah. um, inconsistencies and asymmetric, asymmetrical aspects, but... It is kind of, I don't know what it's made of, like a clay or something, but it is nice yeah. to have, but it is fragile. Like this jaw part is, it did separate, so I glued that back on and um, so it is delicate now. But this was motivation um, to draw and do studies of just so that you can get used to a skeleton and a, and a skull. And I used that to make uh, a wax skull that I made yeah. out of... Uh, the casing for a cheese that I eat as a snack. and uh, <laughs> A baby I, bell. Yeah, and I've got, I'll show you, I've got... Not sponsored. Not sponsored, but <laughs> I've got tons. I've got a box full there. I've wow. I've got a box full here. And I've got several other boxes full down here of this wax. Just so I can make sculptures out of them. Because I can't bring myself to throw away moldable, malleable materials like that. Which Just a, uh, a disclaimer to everyone, because I know that there's going to be people in the comments at some point mm. when we have a big audience, okay? Artists are hoarders. Yeah. Any artist that says they're not a hoarder is a liar, um, because we are hoarders, and I very much appreciate your box of Baby Bell. I think <laughs> that's amazing. I hoard jars. Um, that's That's my hoarding thing so don't be judgmental okay everyone has something that they hoard because as soon as you see it you're like yeah i'll use it and you yeah. actually found a use and i'm quite impressed <laughs> yeah well i made one skull yeah. but i made lots of different faces and heads uh well not a lot but i yeah. made several and it was going to that was going to be my work for university but it, again it would require an in-person submission and this is all yeah. quite unfortunate to me because if there weren't a pandemic i would go in and I'd be painting in the studio. Drop them off at my house. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing is that it's, I'm, I'm now diverted down this path of video making. And this is what yeah. I said in my recent, we recently had a feedback session. And part of my discussion with the two tutors was I now have to completely drop everything that I've been working on to start videos yeah. again. So it kind of leaves me a bit of a disadvantage really I mean not to kind of try and evoke sympathy but I am sort of like okay let's just try and you know I don't know couple together some film some video clips and yeah it's been hard because initially I thought should it be kind of like a, an autobiographical video of lockdown because I've been filming myself constantly doing nothing doing things you know trying to film anything that's anything or nothing just to capture yeah. something so I thought that's a lot of footage and it's you know this is why my hair's so long so I thought I have it from being relatively short and tidy to being a weird mid-length to being quite a nice length around there and then to this horrible weird length that yeah. doesn't really suit me here which I, I don't know I'm just going to leave it until it gets down to my knees now I don't know how long I'm going to leave it for but um so I was going to create a video out of those clips and then I decided, it's decided instead to um, do something a bit different and yeah. do something which didn't feature me in the film at all and that's probably more promising but it is it's hard to work that stuff out especially on the fly when you're kind of thrown into a different medium all of a sudden so yeah. my motivation for that is um, watching films art films and classic films and just because I really, I like to notice where the camera is. I'm a big fan of Columbo. I think I've mentioned this to you before. I love the TV yeah. show, especially the old episodes, because 
when I watch it with my mum, I usually say to her, look at where the camera is. And it's basically because it'll be a big wide shot where you'll see the two characters. And then at some point, the camera will lift and move and start to circle around because it has a beginning, a middle and an end of that one shot yeah. with no edits. And they don't do that anymore. And I miss it because it's such a nice way of filming a show. And I just get a real, I don't know, endorphin rush or dopamine rush, whatever it is where you kind of have that happy brain. Yeah. I have that happy brain chemical stuff going on because I'm watching going, yeah. God, they know the lighting, they know the framing, the composition's beautiful. It tells a story. It lets them both kind of have these great poses and positions. It makes me want to pause it and draw or paint it. So yeah, that is inspiration for me to make films that are completely different to that but it's at least trying to create the same sort of intrigue and quality to the camera angles and um, that's going to be hard to show because I'm going to show a clip it's obviously not going to look like a Columbo episode or uh, you know Ingmar Bergman film which is another person I watch and actually one of our tutors got us to watch um, a documentary by uh, Agnes Varda um, called The Gleaners and I. Did you ever watch that, by the way? No, I couldn't find where to watch it. Um, mm. And I did ask, and I don't think anyone responded, and then I forgot about it, so... No, no, well, <laughs> you might not... I don't know if yeah. you would have responded to it the same as I did, but I I really enjoyed how she made, made that film because she was very um, kind of wholesome and just seemed to have a good sense of how to carry you along in a story that seems to be looping around over and over again to the same points yeah. which is gleaning is to pick up the leftovers of whatever's been done and it's usually a harvest so when the harvest is all picked yeah. up you've got all these bits of you know corn or whatever and um the gleaners go and pick up the droppings basically you know the things that didn't get picked up by the harvest and they put them in their aprons and gleaning is something which carries over to Um, people in marketplaces who pick up you know things that have been dropped that are still useful and also it's an expression to glean some information is to go into university say and then as you're passing by another student's room say like a different year or a different discipline and you overhear something being said that overhearing is gleaning some information if you've taken something in and you're like you know, you glean a bit of uh, knowledge or information. So it was one of those yeah. types of messages that were being um, uh, kind of conveyed, I suppose, and put across to us by the tutor. But since then, I've got all of Agnes Varda's uh, documentaries because I'm a hoarder, like Jamie was saying. So yeah. if I have one, I want them all. I'm like, right, everything Agnes Varda's ever done, even if there's no subtitles because she's French. So I just got everything and watched as many as I could and. I love her films, but they're very, very artsy, and it's not for everyone because art films yeah. are different to, you know, um, cinema. But that's motivation and inspiration for me, definitely, to make films and to try and film things. I filmed today earlier this morning when I went and picked up a prescription because in the hedges at my pharmacy, there's a there's a hedges, there's a road, then there's hedges. Then there's a car park, then there's the pharmacy, you know, it's laid out like that. And at the hedges where I park my car in the car park, there's a pair of shoes. And it just looks weird because they're like clean black (laughs) shoes. They're not like trainers of a kid. They're they're clean black shoes, not fancy shoes, but they just look strange seeing there because you just think, how has that happened? How do you have shoes placed on the grass underneath some hedges and then there's, yeah. there's loads of litter there. It's really sad. There's, you know, masks and bottles and things which you just wish people would pick up and put in the bin. But um, And I should have done it. But at the same time, I filmed it instead because I thought I want to capture what's there. Yeah. And see if it can be included. And um, at the moment, my concepts for university are on boundaries, which is quite an abstract concept because... Boundaries yeah. can be emotional boundaries, can be physical boundaries, it can be territorial boundaries, it can be um, philosophical boundaries, you know, like the land and sky. Intellectual. Exactly. Intellectual, yeah, very good. So all these types of things. And uh, hello, Zero. <laughs> and, uh, 
Uh, I was going to make a bad joke. I'm not going to make one. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's sort of. Um... God, you throw me off now, Zero. I'm trying to think of what I was saying. <laughs> Intellectual boundaries and things like that, because it's it's such a broad spectrum of what you can explore for boundaries. But it's how I can try to get that video footage. Um, yeah. So, for example, one of the things that I'm using is you know the spinning wheel for when you have no signal on a video yeah Um, that i'm using as a boundary between yourself and signal but i'm not going to say it i'm just going to use it as uh, i don't know if you've seen in old-fashioned films um have you ever seen in old-fashioned films where they have a spinning wheel where it counts down from five to one yeah and they've got like um like that gray yeah um, yeah, I know very vaguely what you're on about. It's like an intro card or whatever you'd call it for like how they count down into yeah. a film. I'm going to use the Wi-Fi footage as a symbol of that. I'm going to try and get the audio for that type of a, a, an introduction for a film and use it yeah. for my thing with the Wi-Fi thing. Just trying to use overlaps of that, but also try and represent boundaries without saying this film's about boundaries or calling it boundaries. Instead, I, just, I want it to just play lots of different you know fences and gates and walls and it's I've got different ideas in different places and it's I'm hoping that it's just gonna have this feel to it for the audience but if not then it'll just be a weird art film where people go what is the point of that but that's kind of what art seems like a lot of the time isn't it you know you go to some art galleries and you're like why is someone just stacked bricks in a gallery I I went yesterday and um in the Tate, there was just a stack of breeze block. <laughs> like, it. just in the middle of the floor. Um, and, you know, not to bash anyone, but I don't get it. Personally, I don't get it. No. Um, and some of the things that were there, to be honest, <clears throat> in my experience, it's mainly the Tate where yeah. I see these kind of things and I'm just like, what is going on? Um, like, one of them was um this massive clothing line with oversized clothes on it and it was accompanied by a video and um i didn't read the description before watching it and apparently it was supposed to be about how people um how people are changed by the buildings that they occupy but in my head because the start of the video she was dancing on a pole and then it went to like her with this massive um clothing frame and um like three other people like putting clothes on there and stuff and i just i didn't get it like (laughs) yeah um that's another thing as well um that does help uh besides like some of the bizarre stuff where you're like what what is that (laughs) um but going to galleries um and seeing work in person like even if it's not directly related to the things that you want to do um you might be able to find little snippets where you're like okay that could inform me in some way um you know it it could be the kind of material that the person's used um how they've applied it it could it could be anything like that or on like a very rare occasion for me in my experience where you see a video and you're like oh yeah that that relates to something similar that I want to do. Mm. Um, so that's a good one, I think. Yeah. And I mean, it's also fun to go to the Tate because they have a really nice gift shop. Um, so even if you don't find anything useful in particular, you might end up buying a £16 wooden hand yeah. that you are playing with on the train. And <laughs> you never know. As a woman's getting off the train, she might be weeing at the things that you're doing because that happened, and I was very happy about it. Weeing? Um, oh, you mean laughing? <laughs> she weeing was laughing, laughing. Oh, right. so hard, <laughs> like coming off the train. She was in stitches, and I don't know what I was saying <laughs> or doing. Um, just to clarify, I hadn't taken my ADHD meds that day because I forgot to <laughs> refill them. So I think that's partially why I was acting the way I was. I wasn't being offensive to people. I just want to put that out there. There was no use of the fingers big, to... Uh... 
I, yeah, I was messing around with a big wooden hand and I was making people laugh. Um, so, you know, even if you hit up the gift shop um, and, you know, you might find materials that you could use. Um, anything like that, really. Yeah. Um, I love the yeah, base of it. I, it. I love that it's got this blue, right? purpley blue ring. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, but I was I was messing around <laughs> oh, and kind really? of like, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Nice. Yeah, um, it was uh, it was a very strange day um, really? because I hadn't taken my meds. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah, I think. So yeah, I definitely. Um, yeah, I definitely um, recommend. If you can go to a gallery, even if it's like, you know, one of those small local community galleries, um, mm. anything like that. Or um, I know that since COVID, a lot of galleries have done online ones as well that you can look at. And it's just to see what other people are doing. Um, and, you know, pigging, pigging off the back of that, if you don't mind. Um, no, that's all is also social media. Instagram is a big one for artists. Um, mm -hmm. You can find some, some really good people on Instagram. Um, if you're not an Instagram user, um, there's a few people that I found through TikTok and then followed on Instagram that I really like. Um, like Nicole Parrish and her insect, which I've mentioned before. I love those insects, they're so great. Um, and you know, it's just like that kind of thing. Um, looking around, seeing the kind of things that other people are doing, maybe even having conversations with them on social media and asking like, you know, their processes. Um, some of them might even have YouTube where they, you know, record themselves in the studio so you can see the kind of things that they're doing and how they get to the, the finished piece, if you will, if that's what you mm. want to call it. Um, and I think that that could be really useful as well. Um, Especially, I don't, even if, um, you know, it's like um, Facebook groups of not even professional working artists, just people doing art. It's kind of like getting yourself in that community can be really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I've made uh, certain people who are kind of friends on there, really. And it's weird to have, for me it is, because I'm of an older generation, so it's weird to have online friends you've never met yeah. outside of that app but I'm hoping that soon we can actually meet one of the people who I made friends with on Instagram and hopefully it's the first of many because I have put out feelers in certain places and waiting to hear back from people but uh, yeah, yeah um, it is a nice place to talk to professionals I mean I've had a couple of messages with uh, Steve Houston who was mentioned on the Draftsman podcast and he featured on there on one episode and he's yeah. someone who is an amazing teacher and I've actually I did a quick study of one of his pieces and sent him a message showing him the image and then um, he responded but he did say he's not he doesn't do portfolio um, yeah. reviews he doesn't do you know kind of he won't give you a critique because that's something you have to kind of put a bit more work into kind of paying and booking and arranging with people and I don't think people like that even have the time yeah. to really do that sort of thing but just being able to have a few words with someone and have them you know um, interact with you at all in a pleasant way of course because I've never encouraged any kind of trolling or yeah. negativity online which people do just to get a rise out of someone I think if you can keep it nice it's a real um, good way of understanding how to speak to professionals and how to uh, make the most out of having those contacts that are reachable yeah. and, and people that you can actually uh, yeah, speak to. I mean, there's an artist who I've mentioned before called Kim Jung-yi and yeah. I'd watch his live videos and it was almost an in-between of a nice contact and trolling. I didn't mean to troll, but it he kind of received it as trolling and I did not read it as trolling. But yeah. every day that he'd do a video, I would ask him, what's the most beautiful thing you've seen today? And he didn't respond well to this question. He didn't love it. Other artists love that question and he didn't love it. He yeah. uh, always responded with a sarcastic um, 
answer. So one of his answers was the fungal infection on his toe. He said it was the most beautiful thing he'd seen. Another answer was what he'd flushed down the toilet that morning. And, um, you know, so he was really trying to reject the yeah. question. But the person who took the questions is a young woman. And she always loved the question because she was excited to read it. And you could tell she was like, oh, what's the most beautiful thing you've seen today? And he recognised me every time I ask it. <laughs> and people in the comments would even, if they'd ask it, they'd someone else would say, that's Simon's question. Yeah. <laughs> they knew that's my question. And I'd do it to Stan Prokopenko. I'd do it to Carla Ortiz. Carla Ortiz is a fantastic uh, illustrator herself. And she loved that question. And she gave a lovely answer. Yeah. And her most beautiful thing she'd seen that day was her cat curling up on the couch with her while she was watching a film in the evening. So, because I do remember, you know, what people say for their answers, because I think they're great and interesting yeah. questions. But it's a good question as an artist to ask yourself, uh, not every day, but if you can every day, it's one of those things where it's like a daily drawing. If you can remember something from the day that's the most beautiful thing that you've seen that day and yeah. it's not the pressure of is it the most beautiful thing it's just what stands out to you as a beautiful thing that you've seen that day and it can't be anything it can't be something that isn't beautiful but it's a great question for an artist because of the observational skills that you need to hone and yeah. memory that you're trying to you know nurture as someone who uses imagery and emotion to try and convey a message and I think that's why it's a great question, which is what I got from a, a mentor of mine from years ago. Yeah. And another question which she used to ask me, which I now ask others, and I asked Kim Jung Yi and Carla Ortiz and others, is what do you like and what don't you like about the piece you're working on now? Yeah. Kim Jung Yi loved that question. He loved it, but he'd only answer half of it. He'd only ask what, answer what he didn't like. He would. He had nothing for what he did like. He didn't like anything about what he was drawing and he had loads for what he didn't like, which I told my brother that yesterday and he loved that. that yeah. He didn't have anything good to say about his own work because it shows he has a very, very critical mind for his own work. It's a great thing. It shows that he's striving to improve yeah. and he's not content with what he's doing. He's more, that's not quite right. I don't like the fact that there's so much of this and that could be simplified. And he went into detail for a long time about what he didn't like about yeah. his work. And Carla Ortiz did the same thing where she was more talking about the atmosphere that she'd created with a piece she was working on. But I think things like that are really quite, to try and loop it back around to the theme, quite motivational as an artist to remember the importance of the beauty that you observe day to day uh, and, uh, and to critique your own work. So yeah. what do I like about this? What don't I like about this, which I'm working on, whether it's a painting or a drawing or a sculpture or something abstract, whatever it is. That's something which I think if more of us thought like that more often, we would probably benefit greatly from that type of uh, discipline. I think as well, if um, if you struggle to do it yourself, it's always handy to, um, to kind of have someone that can do it for you. Um, mm. Because it's, I think for me personally, it was quite like... Um, it was a hard mindset for me to get into where I'd critique my own work because I, like when I did my A-levels and stuff, that kind of thing never happened. So for me to be more reflective about the stuff I'm doing, which is why I value you so much as a friend. It's one of the reasons, because I could send you anything and you could be like, these are the things that you need to improve on. These are the things that I like about it. And once you have that person, um, that kind of is able to do that for you you start to you start to notice what they're talking about and you start to pick up on um the kind of language that they use and it makes it easier for you to do it for yourself as well um which i think is really beneficial because you know i do have paintings that i've done where i do really like them um like i think one of them was shown in a few episodes ago my creepy children um, I love that painting. I can still nitpick at it because I've gotten used to, you know, other people doing it and I've gotten used to, like when I was painting it, for people that don't know, I would send um, Simon updates of every single time I'd done one and you'd be like, okay, I like it. 
but these are the things that you could change. And I could see everything that you were talking about, which made it easier for me to look back at it and kind of notice these things as well on my own time. So it's kind of, it's, <laughs> It's a difficult thing to kind of train yourself into, but I think once you do, it's really beneficial. Um, and I think this kind of, this could kind of link back into that viewfinder thing as well. If you're able to be more reflective, instead of just using the viewfinder and like slapping it on there and going, yeah, that, if you can kind of sit with it for a second and reflect upon like how it works and if it is working, then it makes it easier for you to push and develop ideas forward because you know the kind of things to avoid and you know like what's working and what isn't. Mm, absolutely. It takes a lot of trust from both sides in my opinion. Yeah. It's, it took a lot of trust for me to say things to you which I noticed because I didn't want you to take it as I don't want to show Simon any of my work anymore no. because he'll just say what's wrong with it. And I also didn't want to make you feel bad about your work because I thought that's not the intention of this at all. It's yeah. to try and say, this is what I'm noticing. And if I can notice it, if, if I can, you know, gift you that um, perception that yeah. I've had trained into me where you, even if you love something, it's like Caravaggio. I've, I've looked at Caravaggio with my brother and said, huh, that's a bit off, isn't it? That's a bit weird. And it feels cheeky to do it to absolute masters but it's no. always something there i did it yesterday uh i think it was in yeah. the tape we were looking at something and i was like the perspective's off yeah <laughs> yeah um it'll be true yeah it's... and like i was the only only level six fine art there so i was surrounded by like photographers and stuff like that yeah. and i was with a, a photography student and we were looking at it and um i think um, I think this person's got ADHD as well because we were like bouncing off each other and just like yeah. being weird but I, I was just stood there looking at it and I was like can you see what's wrong with it and she was like what do you mean I was like can you, can, have you noticed like look at it look at it a bit harder can you tell me what's wrong with that and she was like no I don't know what you mean I was like the perspective's off look and I kind of like pointed it out to her I was like it should go like this but it isn't and she went oh yeah I was like yeah the perspective's wrong um but I think that's really you know that is beneficial as well to notice when you know people that you look up to don't like when they make mistakes because then you realize that it's okay for you to do the same thing because we're all people like yeah. as long as you can recognize it and work on it and you know push it forward improve your skills then it'd be really beneficial mm, absolutely i think it's a it's a great thing to have to know to be able to notice <coughs> that and it's yeah people say they'll have done that on purpose people <coughs> always say that yeah and i don't think it's very often true no because with caravaggio people will say oh he'll have done it on purpose just like they say with kubrick he'll have made that mistake on purpose i think he's human that's just my yeah theory you know my theory is that he was actually human made mistakes and most of the time people try not to and they strive to go not perfect but try to go something powerful and as accurate as you can be yeah and you'll still have times where you miss and it's not a bad thing it's just interesting to see and it's good for you to be able to notice because it's not trying to take away from that work it's trying to grow with yeah. others around you to be able to observe that it's not a negative impulse and I think that's also inspiration to try and hone that the eye that you have to look further into things. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like learning from other people's mistakes as well. Um, yeah. Like you can still really enjoy the work, um, but you know, I think it's important to, to always be critical of even the masters and, you know, yeah. people that have so many years experience it's always important to have that critical view of things because you'll start to notice and then as soon as you start to notice you'll notice in your own work and it could be really helpful for generating new ideas and finding new ways of doing things that work better than what you've previously done that wasn't so That's successful true. yeah i mean sometimes there are occasions where someone will have done something wrong yeah and that will give you an idea because doing something wrong can sometimes generate ideas and they very much live by that philosophy in university. And I kind of resent that philosophy of 
do things wrong because that's where ideas come from. I think ideas come from all over the place. If you're a yeah. creative person, you just, you know, you soak every, everything up as far as uh, inspiration and judgment, you know, whether it's yeah. good or bad judgment. It's just you're, you're wired that way. Most of us are anyway, I think. And um, yeah, so I do think that mistakes can help you have ideas of your own. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily always mistakes, just things which are your viewing. There was uh, on my on the microwave in the kitchen in this house. There's um, magnets on the microwave, and one of the magnets is of um, I think it's the QE2, like a, a cruise ship, Queen Elizabeth yeah. II, and that's holding up um, a picture by um, by Clint. Is it Gustav Gustav Clint? Isn't it? Yeah, and um, it's holding up one of his pictures, and I was looking at it from a distance, and it looked to me like a landscape, like a tall landscape, because the QE2 was all blue, yeah. and the ship was barely visible. So the ship was it was white, but it was an off white, so it looked like wispy clouds. Yeah, and the Gustav Klint was all that gold and yellow, so that looked like a meadow, and it just looked like a landscape. It didn't look like, you know, an embrace like like Gustav Klint does, where he's got. Um, two people and all this gold and yellow and all this decorative stuff and then you've yeah. got the ship at the top in a separate you know fridge magnet which is being used on the microwave and my eyes just made it into a landscape and since then I took a photograph of it and tried to manipulate it on my phone to say I'm going to paint that as a landscape because yeah. as much as it isn't a landscape that's what I saw as a mistake it's one of those things where you can just piece things together and sometimes be inspired by things that aren't actually there um, it's a weird way of idea generation, but I think that that's just as useful as anything else is developing artwork in a more conventional sense. But all types of things can inspire work out of you. It's just being receptive and staying open and staying kind of trusting yourself yeah. you know, in that kind of process. It's kind of just like being observational to your surroundings, like even interesting objects that you find around your home. Because um, I've got quite a few where I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then it leads to, you know, me either drawing it or painting it. Um, and that idea might not go anywhere, but I've done something. And that's always a positive. Um, yeah. And, like, some of the... Huh? Oh, it was the postman. <laughs> Sorry, I just, like... Do you mind, I sir? I'm filming! <laughs> God! <laughs> The you need an on-air light. Uh, <laughs> you need a red on-air light. My God. Um, so even, you know, interesting objects that you find in a charity shop, because there's some really wacky stuff there if you look for it. Yeah. Um, and, like, my opinion is obviously quite biased because I do enjoy still life. So my inspiration comes from objects um, that I've either, yeah. like, found um had gifted to me it's always um i don't know like more alternative things i suppose i'm not sure if the camera is showing but like that school there he's called damon and i've yeah. drawn him so many times um and i got him from i got him from firefly um the shop oh, cool. that i took simon to when we first met yeah yeah um and he's been insert image yeah <laughs> I think I've got an image actually so yeah insert um he's been <laughs> quite a he's he's been an object that I've focused on a fair few times because there's always like if you look at something for long enough you'll notice something new every single mm. time like as long as you're looking so, for it you'll find it yeah okay. I think we're good to stop it there so uh, also there are um there are people online who will introduce you to certain um materials or or instruments yeah. to use and one of them is uh, I love watching Peter Draw's videos I've mentioned him before and he's someone who I really uh, appreciate and can speak to once in a while through messages yeah. and I love it he's someone who in his videos he will talk about different types of pens all the time because um, he always uses ink and one of the pens that he introduced was the Pilot Parallel pen and that's what this is and I will show you that it has a flat nib like that can you see it oh wow yeah so kind of looks like a um a calligraphy pen 
it is exactly that that's exactly what it is and yeah um it comes in different measurements this is a 6.0 so this is one of the larger uh, nibs but it's great fun to use i haven't used it enough and i haven't used it well enough but it is great inspiration yeah. and motivation to make art because a new um pen especially like this or pencil you know there are let me introduce something else there is this my favorites the black wing pencils i am gonna tag you on that <laughs> hang on bear with me just a second it's lovely long pencils now this yeah. is the artist <clears throat> pencil oh excellent is that the black one as well Beautiful. yeah and then ah, the pearl and the natural which i've oh. never seen before no i haven't either i will let you know um, yeah yeah uh of so how dark it is or how light it is yeah um it's it's actually quite funny um for one of our projects we had to talk about something and simon's thing was the Blackwing, and <laughs> I remember sitting next to you, and you were like, "Have you ever used a Blackwing before?" And I just pulled out my pencil case, like, "Yes, I have." Sir. <laughs> <laughs> I was Snap. so proud. I was like, yeah. yes. it was great. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, I remember that was the first time when we were in our first year then, and I'd yeah. seen a woman from the ceramics uh, department in tears just devastated because she couldn't think of what she wanted to do as her yeah her object her thing to talk about and i said look if you want reassurance i'm in fine arts i'm doing a pencil how uncreative is that I'm, i've thought i'm gonna do a pencil because i like drawing so she it's was like the okay. best though i know it is yeah i didn't say that to her because i just wanted to reassure her all they want you to yeah. do is talk about something doesn't matter yeah. what it is it could be your shoes you know so long as you present something and say this is this you know speaking of which i have yeah. actually got new shoes they're really nice new shoes I wish I could... I should... are they new the shoes. flat ones as well they are they're vivos again what are the um this was like oh when <laughs> it it was like the i don't know i'd say that we weren't like as close at this point but I'm not sure if I was feeling down or something and we were stood outside the main building and Simon was like, watch this, just took off his shoe and like rolled it. And I was just like, what is going on? <laughs> like you just rolled yeah. your shoe. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was, I think, uh, yeah, it just been a difficult day for you. We were in history and context. Yeah. Because we were in the main building. So I remember we were walking up to the main campus entrance and I was like, hey, Take a look at this. We're halfway up the steps. I just thought I'll take a shoe off, roll it up, just to make you go like, "What's going on?" And just going, "Yeah, on, I know what's going." I just thought a bit of fun injected into every moment will just help. And it's again, it's just helping someone it kind helped. of realise that it's there's yeah. fun to be had and interesting things can happen. Uh, the one other thing, oh, actually, there's two other things. Okay, talking about Peter draws, just showing the pilot parallel pen isn't quite enough because we all know. Well, most of us know Peter Draws is all about the rotary and pen. That's what he yeah. uses. So he always uses. So I had to get a set of the rotary and pens. And I got the um, isograph and the repeatograph. These are isograph pens, but I did get the repeatograph as well. But these yeah. are beautiful, straight line, consistent um, line pencils, which I'm sure you know these. And yeah, I do recommend them. They're, they're very... Um, they're very much illustrative pens, but they come with the cartridge that you can remove and refill. And that's something where, when I watched his videos, I wanted to get, have a line quality like what he had in his drawings. And yeah. I must admit, it's so different from a fine liner that it was well worth the purchase. And it comes with this lovely ruler slash kind of different shapes and things. I've never used it, but it's just nice to have as a set. And it was very yeah. cheap. I forgot how much it was, but it was really affordable. And it comes with ink, it comes with a pencil, a mechanical pencil, lovely German, you know, kind of uh, instruments. So it's very nice and spare nibs for your mechanical pencil. That's uh, Peter Drill's inspiration. And then the last but not least is my friend who I'm also hoping to get on the podcast at some point, uh, James Guy Eccleston. It goes by Draw Me Guy on uh, Instagram. 
In fact, he's got yeah. several Instagrams. And he told me about the Mars Lumograph black pencils. So I got these and they are very dark. They're waxy to draw with, which is not yeah. my preference, but they are, they've got a quality to them, which I'd not seen before. And I've sharpened them kind of, you know, how I do with the, uh, with the Stanley knife. And it's not quite how you're supposed to sharpen pencils. I've seen videos on how you're supposed to sharpen pencils, but I still like to get as much of the nib exposed as possible and try yeah. to get a nice point to it. But things like this, buying little, um, I mean, if you can afford to buy things, because if you can't, then whatever you can find that's new and different to use. For things like this, it's a still relatively affordable little set of pencils, I think. I'll put up a link if I can. Um, yeah. But this really just made me, I, I immediately drew a four-sided box and then the lid as well. So it's technically five faces that I drew on with these pencils because I wanted to get used to how they worked and see the range yeah. of lights to darks. And Things like that are really, you know, good motivation to get you making art and to try and generate ideas because you've got new materials to use. Yeah. It's really handy. And even if, like, you can't afford it at the time, you know, it could be something that you ask for for, like, Christmas um, or something that you can save for because having new materials, like Simon, I found that, like, immediately I want to sharpen this and I want to know yeah. what it's like. Yeah. because I've used the other two but I've never seen this one so I want to know mm. what the difference is and you know with paint and stuff like that experimenting in the different kinds of uh, the different brands of paint for one um, like my go-to now is Galleria for acrylic because I like the the pigment and the quality yeah. but having you know I, I know it's not achievable for everyone because things are expensive um, but as I've said previously I would use like cheaper paints because it was all I could afford so having the opportunity to treat myself and get more higher quality paints it encouraged me to actually use them um, yeah. because I, I wanted to know what the difference was and there is subtle differences and I do prefer um, gallery or acrylic paints as opposed to the paints I was using before it doesn't mean that mm. I'm not going to use the other ones again because yeah. they're still like they're still paint um, but you know it could be using a material that you've never used before so mm. like oil paint um, kind of getting out of your comfort zone a little bit um, and seeing how how it works to generate new ideas because it could be that you know you're your ideas haven't moved forward because the material that you're using has limited that like you know it could be the texture or the thickness or how it's applied but having something else to push it forward you could you know you could find that you either really enjoy it and it's doing the things that you want it to do or it could be used for something else so i think that that's a really a positive thing absolutely <laughs> positive <laughs> last week's episode um you know it's it's a good thing to try and do um yeah. and to kind of piggyback off that um i know that well i haven't been to any yet but where we well where i live um i think it's on a monday they have um an art group um I, i'm pretty sure it's free and you can just go there and be mm. with other people of any age using new materials and that could also be a good thing as well um, because you're building connections with a community of other people um, mm. you're exploring new mediums and I think that that could be a positive I haven't done it yet because I don't have much time um, <laughs> <laughs> not an excuse but you know time is quite limited um, yeah. But it's definitely something that I am going to do at some point because I think that, um, you know, talking to other people um, in person as well could be quite good, even if that's just um, your peers where you're studying and bouncing yeah. ideas off each other that way. Or not necessarily in person, it could be like me and Simon, for instance, we, we haven't seen each other in person for about two years, but yeah. we still talk and we'll still generate ideas and it's just having that other person to bounce off because if you just not to make 
not to make assumptions, but if you're just, you know, relatively isolated, you can't really generate new ideas on your own, at least not as effectively. So just having someone there to kind of be like, what do you think of this? Do you think I should do it this way? Mm. Can be really beneficial. Um, even if that's, I don't know, a sibling or just yeah. someone, you know, it could be anyone. Yeah. Um, that would be... Well, so yeah, speaking of yeah. which, I do actually have um, some of my brother's work, which is always nice to have for inspiration yeah. of painting, you know, because he does beautiful paintings. And to have a book of his paintings is a joy to look through. It's always... Uh, yeah. It, get, it makes you want to paint, makes you want to, you know, just spend that time to do some studies and to mix your colours. And I'm going to try and do more painting because of Jamie, my brother, people online, just things that, you know, make me want to really practice and experiment with things because all I do is drawings most of the time. And yeah. I'm coming to the end of uni and I'm going to want to try and get a job. But things like that, I love that chair. I love that. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but getting the chair in there as well just lovely like paintings that. you know lovely uh, yeah. colors of flowers and things so yeah can you things ask like him can you ask gav to send me one <laughs> send you one of these i don't yeah. know if you still get because they sold out you know he advertised them on instagram and they sold out immediately um yeah. i can't remember how much they are but if you look at gavinrenshaw.com yeah gavinrenshaw.com he has these, or he did have these to sell. I don't know if he's still got any, you know. This is not I'll my keep an copy. Eye on it. This is my mum's copy. So I need to uh, see if he's got two. And if he has, I will purchase two and send you one because he, uh, he should get some. But um, mm -hmm. on the whole inspiration from other artists, I'll show you another artist that um, I met at Thought Bubble. I mean, I didn't specially meet him, but he was there. He just wasn't especially social. This is a guy yeah. called Lando. And his work in this comic book I love because it's just all line drawings. There's no shading. There's no shadow as far as patches of shadow. There's no yeah. words. And he's got whole stories with no words and just line. And it's, I think it's beautiful. Just page after page of line work. And there'll be some yeah. really abstract ideas. And it's not as though I'm going to make the same artwork. But it's just nice to see someone really explore story without yeah. uh, putting in, you know, just really exploring their own style where they've got really crazy ideas, but they're not putting in any words. There's one where he's got, um, I think it's triangles that start to form in the sky and come together. And to have a sequence of, here it is, it's ones with, uh, there is bits of shading in this one, but there's sequences where triangles will start to form or like you know different shapes will start to form in the yeah. sky and it's just different sequences of how they form together and I love the idea of exploring that of just you know committing to that idea I've not seen anyone else do it quite as thoroughly as he has but he has really thoroughly gone into I mean this has got bits of digital shading but most of it has got no shading and no words and I loved it. And he wasn't a very social guy. As I said, I tried to go up and talk to him, but he, he wasn't up for it. So that's just the case with some artists are less social than others. So that's fair enough. But, so um, artist books is another good one. Yeah. Artist books. Yeah. This is, yeah. I mean, it's, it's well worth doing. There's some from Instagram, but some just from conventions. And that's from the Thought Bubble Convention in Leeds, which is where I met Kim Jong-Yi. Well, you could also do... Um... You know, like you did an ink drawer in a day. It could be like a small pencil drawer in a day of just like yeah. something that you've seen. Um, I know that I did it at one point. Um, I think, I w I'll be perfectly honest, I did it for about a week and then I forgot. Um, <laughs> and I just, I, I never remembered to do it again. Um, yeah. But that could be really beneficial as well. Um, mm. And being, you know, being an influence to other people can be good. Um, I know that with my little brother, um, he's only, he's going to be 13 soon. Oh my. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he's always interested in the stuff that I'm doing. Um, yeah. And, you know, not to like inflate my ego, um, because that's not what this is about. He will um, show his friends and 
they'll do work because they've seen the work that I do and yeah. you know I I help my little brother with the stuff that he does so he'll send me drawings that he's done and I'll not that I'm I'm not going to be harsh about it I'll ask him first and be like do you want my honest opinion mm. um and I'll make a comment about how like the chin doesn't look right and it needs to be um <laughs> more sharp and stuff like that yeah. um so being a good influence to other people can also be really beneficial um Absolutely. not so much like I wouldn't say necessarily generating ideas but at some point it will get to that point because you know you'll then see the work that they're doing and you know you'll pick up on things that they're doing and you'll want to do stuff like that as well possibly so yeah. it's always good to have that like back and forth even if it is with a small child you know yeah absolutely i mean just knowing that it's it's motivation for you knowing that someone else is excited yeah. to see your work and then yeah. it can it can generate ideas because of knowing how valuable your work is to others, even just to one other person. It can make you think, well, if I'm, you know, making art, then it gives you confidence in your own abilities. I really yeah. think that is a good, valuable way to do it. Yeah. 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 I think, like, for me, one of the reasons that I have continued doing what I'm doing is because I've seen the impact that it's had on my little brother. And, um, you know, he's had comments from other people, um, mainly his old foster carer, being like, oh, well, you can't do this because you're colourblind and stuff like that. And I want to show him that he can do it. As long as he puts his mind to it, he can do it. Yeah. Because I'm doing it. And I know that it's having a positive impact on his life, which then motivates me to do it even more because I want to be a positive role model for him. Oh God, English. <laughs> I, I want to be that positive role model and influence and show him that, you know, if he sets his mind to it, he can achieve it. It just takes time. And, you know, we've sat down and we've spoken about it and I've said to him, you know, like, it, it's not that I woke up one day and I'm in this place, it's that it was, it was hard work and it was worth it. And he understands that and I've been, you know, transparent about almost everything mm -hmm. that it's taken to get to where I am now. Yeah. Because I want him to, I want to under, I want him to understand the realistic aspect of everything. You know, like the, the time it takes, the work it takes. Um, and just having him there and seeing him get excited about the things that I'm doing. And, you know, him him being... I, I don't know how to explain it. Him being so excited about my work that he shares it with the people around him. Yeah. It just... It makes me happy and it makes me want to continue doing what I'm doing yeah. because I see how happy it makes him and I want to continue doing that. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. It's a lovely dynamic to have with anyone, Yeah. But especially a little brother. That's just lovely. I mean, I, did, I would say that it's a harsh truth that I don't find art any easier after all this time. I understand things better. No. But what I understand better is that you've got to try harder. And it's you've got to keep trying and keep trying because you can't just say, well, I've been drawing or painting for 10 years now, so I can just do this naturally. It's I know now that I have yeah. to try harder and look harder and remember that I have to pause and take this time to make sure I've observed better than I did last time. And I've remembered the mistakes yeah. from last time and taking those things with you. It doesn't make it easier, but it makes the memory reinforce what's important which makes an aspect of it at least known at least you know what you were missing last time um, for example I'm just going to give a quick yeah. example I was told by my mentor when you go to a life drawing session the next one you go to because I'd go to them all the time and she said the next one you go to if you're given 10 minutes spend five of those 10 minutes not drawing just looking for five minutes yeah so you only have five minutes to draw and the difference in the drawing is massive. It's night and day because if you sit down and you go, right, I've got 10 minutes, let's start drawing. You're drawing without looking. 
for a long time. Yeah. So you're not really, you're kind of observing things on the fly. You're kind of like going, oh, yeah. that's lined up with that. And oh, I've done that a bit wrong and try and correct that. And instead of all that, if you look for half of the time that you've got, you'd be amazed at what the other half will involve because you've observed so well yeah. what's what's there. And that is the use of that five minutes. Or even if it's 10 minutes, if you've got 20 minutes to do a drawing, you spend 10 minutes looking, it feels like too long. But I promise you, if you yeah. do that, your drawing will be twice as good. It's just, it's unbelievable how much difference it makes. Something which Peter Draw said once, and I told someone from uni, and I won't say who it was, not in our year, but someone who I speak to, you know, and they disagreed or yeah. they partially disagreed. And I still think it's a great bit of advice. It's not always true, but I think a lot of the time it's true. Something which Peter Draw said in passing once is, if you only spent twice as long doing a drawing, it would probably look 10 times as good, which is yeah. brilliant because it's so true. Your drawing will look 10 times better if you spend twice as long doing those marks and being a little bit more tidy instead of scribbly. Instead of doing your hatching all you know, back and forth where you've got the line and then a zigzag of a line, if you just make sure that your line is your hand is lifted for the next line so that it's it's parallel dashes the difference is massive yeah. compared to having that line you know where it's just being scored constantly i don't know things like that is maybe not a good example but i mean that little bit more effort will you'll improve and get faster over time that will become easier to know that you can do straight lines and hatching better but it is just taking your time putting in the effort and doing things which are so difficult. don't rush it yeah don't rush yeah yeah sometimes rush sometimes don't because we were taught in university the difference between doing a rushed paintbrush mark and a more considered slow paintbrush mark and how both are valuable and that's true yeah and even on the same canvas that's true you know to have the rush thing first and then to go over it with considered marks but it's it depends and that's the thing is that it's yeah. never this formula works this doesn't it's more you have to try it and then some things work for some things and not not for others um i mean i yeah. took time in history and context drawing jamie that's my picture of jamie there <laughs> and that was because i had the opportunity to do that instead of sat there talking about how emojis are art which really just killed me so yeah i was sat in history and context and I think you just said, yeah, you can draw me if you want. And you sat like that. And I was like, cool, it's going to be a challenge because there's a hand. But I like the challenge. That's Artists yeah. try to avoid drawing hands. And I think, don't. Draw the hand. Do the best that you can. I paint hands. Yeah. I love painting hands. It's brilliant. And you, you purchase hands, you know. You invest in. I do. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And I, I think, like, one small tiny thing I'm gonna add before we wrap everything up mm. and do the outro is um, as much as I'm very much against sketchbooks if you have any kind of notebook that you haven't used try and get into the habit of writing things down that didn't work writing like even if you know during a painting um, it could be the colours that you've used or how you've mixed them or, you know, the colour ratio within your mixing. Mm. If it didn't turn out right, try and write it down or at least remember somehow so that you can look back and be like, OK, that didn't work. I won't make that mistake again. Um, because, I mean, I don't do it. I should probably listen to my own advice. Um, this always happens. Um, but I, I try and keep mental notes of of things like that and I think it is really beneficial to to take note of the mistakes that you've made and how you can improve them so that if you're like me and you forget everything um you can look back at it and be like oh yeah um that wasn't successful because you get into the habit of doing things a certain way and you know if it if it gets to the point where that way doesn't work anymore you need to remind yourself that you have to do something differently next time yeah. um so yeah, just try and try and keep like a small notebook. It doesn't have to be a sketchbook because it doesn't have to be. I'm telling you, <laughs> uh, it could be like you know a tiny notepad that is quick, like squiggle down mm. um, something that had happened, so that you have it for future reference. I think that's that would be quite beneficial. Absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. Then I will <clears throat> say that is the episode for this week. 
hope you enjoyed it. And yep. This was another episode of <laughs> Studio Buddies doing a podcast with a little gay guitar. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.